Of course, it looked like Manchester City were going to drop points at Molyneux, but for that late John Stones goal, was Bernardo Silva offside? This is what Gary O'Neill had to say. There is some grey area that can go either way, and once it was like that, I wasn't confident it would go our way. It was similar to a goal Wolves had disallowed against West Ham last season. We sent an image to referees showing with proof that the West Ham keeper could see the ball. But the reason we were given was the player was in close proximity. The same argument could be said here, but we just have to accept it. He's interfering with Sir. Uh, he's, he's in an onside position. He, he is only judged to be in an offside position once Stones heads the ball. When Stones heads the ball, again, looking at, at, at uh, Silva's positioning, he kind of ducks and moves comfortably enough away to, 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 to his right. Um, to the point where I, I, I think at that point he's not, he's not interfering. OK. Um, so for me, I, I think the goal was right to stand. Sar's eyes, if you watch the replay, Sar's eyes never leave the ball. Right. It's not, it, even, clo it's not even close. See, for, for me, for me it, just, it comes down to when Stones heads the ball. Take a still right there. And if, if from there, Bernardo Silva, you, you judge him as, as interfering with the goalkeeper, then fine. But I, I'm not sure how, who does that and, and, uh, at that point. Because, again, just keeping in mind, this is direct from a corner kick. And you cannot be offside anywhere on the park direct from a corner kick. OK, I don't want to go over old ground here, but I'm intrigued, Kieran, as, this, as we saw once again, Manchester City defensively looking exposed, as they have so much this season, against lesser quality sides. What's going on? Is it, it can't just be all about the absence of Rodri. For me, it is. For me, it is, Dan, because he is that influential. He, there's going to be other games where, you know, this happens to City and, you know, they don't get a last-minute goal to come back. Um, so, uh, for me, Rodri is, is that good of a player that this is why City are struggling. But, Mario, explain to me, then, how you've got such experienced defenders... Why do you need someone to hold their hand like Rodri when surely they can fix this amongst themselves, no? Yeah, but I think, I think what, what Kieran and what you guys already said, he, he brings calmness in your team. You know, when you have someone in the middle of the park, it's like you don't have to worry about it. Look how spread the midfielders were when, when he cut through them. And then on the side, like Guardiola is, is running inside and Stones is only ball watching. So when he watches the ball, he doesn't even know, you know, that the attacker is on his left shoulder and he's free. Because if he knew he was free, maybe he would have taken a step to the left or, or tried to read the pass and he didn't do that. So the, the ball came through and then he was gone. So in a way, this, the way they play now, City plays away from home. When you play away from home, you sometimes have to build a certain level of security in the sense of this is a team that gave them problems last season too. So you know that if you're going to play them, they're normally going to think, you know, Neil did a great job. Remember last season, everybody was raving about it and saying like, oh, how smart he was and how he did that. Yeah, because he did really, he really intelligently tried to play against them. Now, the next game comes again. They were fortunate at the end, you understand, because of the ruling that it, it went the advantage to them. But in a way, you cannot expose yourself as, as a team like that, especially when it's against Wolves, that the only thing they had was counter-attacking against City. And they surely did it a couple more times than that we just saw. This isn't just coming out of the blue. You look at the Fulham game before yep. the international break, we saw exactly the same happen. Yep. Why aren't they addressing it? Why is this not being fixed in training? Well, to the Rodri point, I think we've got to understand that what Rodri does that you don't see is talking. Yeah. He's communicating. But tough, he's gone. He's out. <laughs> right. He? Well, he's not there till the end of the season. That's, that's why they were so good with him in it. Because right. he was putting people in positions. When the ball got turned over, they were in positions to, whether it was him or somebody else, to stop it. And so when he's not there, nobody's doing that. But then when you get to the back four, now you've got to, now you've got to defend. The one we showed in the clip when they get through and, and Edson makes a save, they try to play a high line where there's no pressure on the ball. So straight away you're putting yeah. yourself under <laughs> yeah. pressure. And the actual goal itself, the one they score with, genu they can't handle genuine pace. They, ju they can't. Uh, I, think, I think Diaz struggles with people running at him. I think John Stones struggles as well with, with genuine pace as well. So allied that with the Rodri situation, that's why teams are getting chances against them. I, I think it goes further than just this season. Manchester City, by their standards, by, by the standards of a team 
that has won a, a major European league kept a, a ridiculous, did not keep many clean sheets last mm. season. And, and while, again, it's, it's easy to kind of forget or dismiss that because of the season that they went on and had winning the title, um, by, by their standards, by anybody else's standards, I, I, I thought it were desperately poor. And this is just an extension of that. Granted, had Roger been on, you can quite easily make the argument, had Roger been on the park, nobody kind of waltzes straight up the middle of, of, of your team as, as, as Wolves did certainly on the day. Um, but this is a, is a, is a problem that um, has playing Manchester City that somehow Pep Guardiola hasn't done a good job of addressing. But then, again, we are talking about the, what, four or five times defending champions. Yes. It's hard to be critical in, in, in that circumstance. Uh, Mario, meanwhile, at the other end, what's interesting, we, we've seen it quite a bit this season, we kind of teams bunkering in and then trying to catch City on the counter-attack. From a defensive standpoint, are you still as intimidated by City as you have been in the past, given that you kind of know how horizontal everything is going to be? Frank talked about them being boring yesterday to watch. Defensively, how difficult is it to do what these teams are doing? It, it, it's difficult. Why? Because, you know, like, because City built something up for themselves. You understand? So I think, I think in that criteria, of course, people are going to watch that. But see, it, I think when you, when you win that much, it's sometimes also, it's very difficult to stay disciplined. Eh? If you're that great of a team, they are so good on the ball. They dictate the tempo, the way Pep plays. It's so common, you know, it's not like... Because maybe it's in England, but before that, of course, I, we have seen it all. You understand what he did at Barcelona and what he was, you know, the journey that he had at Munich. But what is very important is when you play against him, he, because the risk taking that he does, you're going to get an opportunity, but you cannot afford to miss your chance because you might get one and mm. you better take that one because you're not going to get a couple. And Wolves got a couple. And they did not take them. And that is, I think, when you work that hard, because Wolves trade the whole week eh, to get themselves ready for this particular game. Because it's a big game, you prep. And I've been in situations like you're in a smaller team, you're playing against a big team like that. You prep so long and ready to go. And then it's just, ah, because that's just <laughs> when you play big teams. They have that little kill factor. And that's what happened. Uh, let's take a look at how the bookies have things set. Remember, as uh, Kieran mentioned, Arsenal, of course, losing against uh, Bournemouth on Saturday. Uh, Manchester City, our favourites. And now Liverpool and Arsenal are now joint second favourites. Remember, it was only a few matches ago that saw Arsenal favourites, Manchester City behind them. Liverpool way out. Uh, Liverpool, of course, we've discussed a lot already. But, Kieran, let's, let's talk about Arsenal. And it's interesting you made the point, I think, which is a valid point, that it's not going to be quite like seasons in the past where Manchester City aren't going to drop as many points as I think it looks like they will this campaign. But that has got to be taken advantage of. Arsenal need to not be losing, obviously, in matches against Bournemouth. Can they sort themselves out? Because what we've seen so far, the answer is no. No, you're absolutely right, Dan. They, they have to capitalise because it's, it's not like previous seasons. I think it's going to still be wide open f throughout this whole season. Um, so it's, it's a frustrating one. It, it really is. It's not complete doom and gloom. I, I don't think it's a coincidence that, you know, they've lost two games. Um, I'm not sure how much longer Saka and Odegaard are out for. But I think how he plays with that midfield three is going to determine, you know, how successful... Uh, the team are, you know, I like the look of Marino, Rice and Party, you know, at, at Anfield or in Europe, um, you know, or, or against Man City. Uh, I, I don't know, but Bournemouth, Bournemouth away, I'm, I'm not so sure. I didn't really see it enough, but I'm not so sure. Um, I think they just need to take this one on the chin though and, and, and move on quickly. I think they will. Mario, is it enough to say, look, Arsenal are going to be fine. Once they get Odegaard and Saka back into this starting eleven. You'll see the Arsenal that we're expecting at the start of the season, or is that too simplistic? No, but I, I think a good point what Kieran said was, was you know, in the middle of the park, sometimes it depends who you're playing against. That's what's very important. Sometimes you have to go and take the risk and be more creative. And sometimes when you play against the guys like the cities who are away from home or where you highlight the level, then you can be a bit more defensive. But when you go to a Bournemouth, you gotta be more, you know. You gotta, you gotta be more attacking, and you cannot be done. Like you are the team that is very smart with corners. Look how Bournemouth scored that goal. You cannot mm. get tricked like that. Eh? The flick from Clivert 
and then set him right up. You cannot get done like that. That that is the thing, and that's why I feel like you know even the attackers that you just highlight now. Marino came here, Sterling started, and Tre uh, Trussard started left and right. So also when they they come, they start the game. Okay, Trussard maybe have played. We have seen him a little bit more this year, but I mean Sterling, when he gets the opportunity, the thing is, when you come in, you gotta give them difference. There were maybe a couple of times he took his player on, went on the outside, he had a strike. But I feel like Arsenal, when you come in the team, the key thing for the guys is going to be very important. When you come off the bench, you got to make sure you make a hell of a difference mm. if they really want to go for the title. If not, the bench has to be as important as the ones who are starting the game. And if they don't have that, they will be in trouble. Yeah, we talked about the depth of the Arsenal squad ahead of the start of the season. Well, actually... Mm. Looking at the additions they made, that makes them more of a title contender. Are we doubting that point now a little? Yeah, because on paper, you can't argue that it made them look stronger mm -hmm. as, far, as far as the depth. But you have... When things go against you during the season, injuries, people getting sent off, suspended, the whole thing, to win the title, you've got to ride those things out. And that's, that's down to, as football is, it's all decision-making. You know, does the manager pick the right team? You know, do the players make the right decisions on the field? And so far, we've seen this season that particularly on the field, Arsenal players have been making bad decisions that have been costing them. And so, if they want to win the title, they've got to get rid of them. And How easy is that to do? Well, an, an example would be, you know, the manager has to sit them down and talk to them. You know, he, he said... they know not to get red cards. Yeah. Saliba knows not to drag a man down, you know. They... So, so, Saliba, for example, you know... After the event, dead easy. But Saliba's brain should be, at all, at all times, as a centre-back, as a defender, what can go wrong? That's your job. Right. Saliba fell asleep. That's... But Stevie, I things, think that's Things like hard. that. Well, no, it's not because... He's, he you you have to be second. in a position. You have to be in a position where if something goes wrong, that you're mm. in a position to try and fix it. And as soon as that ball's played by, mm. by Trossard, right, what does he do? He's not thinking clearly, he just grabs him. Number one, why he tries to run the other side of him, I absolutely don't know, because he was, he was on the left-hand side to start with, and his brain should be clear enough that he's got half a field. It, Evan Nielsen's still got half a field to go. So, Saliba's not slow either, so you've got to have a clear mind. It's all about having a clear mind so that on the field you make good decisions. Especially when you're not expecting it, because it's your own player that's, that's making the pass. That, that reaction time that you have to make a decision is so small that when you see it on a replay and you see it five, six times in a row, you think, how That's can you do that? That's what the best players do. But, the best players but, make the good decisions, Kieran. Yeah, that but, split but Stevie, second. That's what separates. That's what separates them. That's what separated Saliba last year yeah. from this year. Mm -hmm. Saliba's made a couple of mistakes this year, I'll tell you. He's not, he's not been that rock that he was last year. And that's the difference, decision-making. I, I also think, you know, when you, when you talk about a player like that, if you're that good, you know, we're talking about Saliba, eh? we're not talking about an average defender. You cannot be done like that. Come on, Kieran, when we were defending, you, you're like, okay, if the guy is quicker than you, imagine the guy is quicker than him, you go before him. And what is it when you play? <laughs> One thing you always had when you played Arsenal, you guys had quick players up front. Hey, you be really, really not smart if you go before. So he stood on the wrong side. I know he, he knows that he was not standing right. Because how many times have we seen him do that? He doesn't do that a lot. It's not like we see that every week he's pulling somebody back because he's standing wrong. No. He made a mistake. He knows that. You understand? Well, yes, you know, I, I actually just, I, I agree. I agree right. that, being on, that he, was not, he was on the wrong side. But in that instance, yeah. when, that, when that ball is played, that reaction to make that decision... Uh, happens so fast that it's for me. It's, yeah, but that's why we play professional football. It's, it's always going to be fast. Yeah. Your first reaction all shouldn't be to grab that somebody. All of the time. It's, it's why we Kira, play. Your, bro. your first reaction should not be to grab somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it when Mario's voice gets high in emotion. <laughs> that's brilliant. You know something's yeah, going on. Yeah, because I'm like, no. That's yeah, right. You just punch him. Look, he's just below you. Give him a punch.